Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Depending on what time you're watching this, what part of the world you're in, this is Chris again, the Watch Sounds, coming with another video review. Today's review is something a bit different. This is the Aventi A11. This is a watch that's been out for about a year or so now. Now, when these things first came out, speaking of the watch in question, guys, this was loaned in by Alex from work. And again, you can look up the video my boss Roman did whenever he interviewed the owners, the two gentlemen that own this company. Pretty cool guys. They're definitely watch watch geeks just like the rest of us. But um, this is definitely a pretty cool watch. Not usually my cup of tea, but the more time that I've spent with it, the more time I've handled it and been able to wear it, the more I see why people like it. If you're looking for kind of a niche kind of watch, this is a pretty cool watch, guys. Now, again, this was linen by work. And we are not selling this, by the way. This was just something that was linen. Uh, quick your swatch check. I am indeed wearing a Seiko. I'm wearing that. If you see my old, old video of this, the Nano Universe limited edition. But again, if you look back, my boss Roman did a review or interview, excuse me, guys. Um, he did an interview with the owners of the company. He seemed like pretty cool guys. They explained their kind of ethos of their company and they don't really want to devalue the company. Now, this is the world's first Chinese tourbillon and it has a in-house Chinese movement, guys. And a lot of people might scoff at that. But once you see it and you handle it in person, it's it's very Richard Mille-esque for sure. It has DNA of uh, automotive DNA. As you can see in the case back in the, the, the watch case itself is modeled to look after a, the back end of a Lamborghini. If you guys have seen the top view of a Lamborghini, which you, plenty of you have seen posters or have posters or have seen the cars on, on the uh, YouTube videos, guys. But again, this is a pretty cool watch for what it is. Like I said, not my usual cup of tea, but I can see why people like it. Now, when it came out a year ago, it was about $5,000 retail, I believe. Now they're up to $11,000. Are they going to shoot up in, in price and value? Nobody knows what the market's going to do on these because these are still kind of a new territory for a lot of people. And it, it definitely does take a certain kind of buyer to want a piece like this. Now, there is the one that I would probably go for is the Sapphire Blue version. The, the version I have here is the Sapphire version, and it is an all Sapphire case, guys. And again, it comes with that in house movement. I'll show you all the specs and details here under the desktop here in a little bit. But again, just, just going over a little bit, it's it, I believe it's the PK Resources uh, movement based out of Hong Kong. And again, really great movement, guys, especially for the price. If this was going to be in another watch, it would probably be about, even if it was a Hublot, uh, it would probably be about $50,000, $60,000, or more. But again, like I said, pretty cool to see, pretty cool to handle. I appreciate you guys letting me borrow it. Anyways, on the desktop, I'll show you guys the watch in question. And on to the desktop for a better view, guys. As you can see, this is definitely a chunky monkey, so to speak. It is about 13 millimeters thick. I believe it's close to 50 millimeters altogether. And again, you can see where the top of the case is shaped like the back end of a Lamborghini, where you can see through that motor. So think of this as like the back end or the back end of a Lamborghini. Seeing you see that movement, it's kind of like seeing the motor, the B12 in a Lamborghini, which is pretty cool. And again, I, I kind of get that ethos. This is uh, definitely a niche watch for niche type of collector. But then again, that's kind of who they're going for. They're not going for the everyday person or the everyday Rolex guy. They want This is going to be the person that wants something different, something unique, and something kind of out of the box, so to speak. Again, kind of a wild card watch for their collection. Might even be for the guy that's got everything else already and wants something different. But again, a, now they do retail, I mentioned earlier, uh, they do retail for 5500 They sell secondhand. I've seen selling for about $11,000. So that is quite a decent price hike, guys, because these are kind of hard to get. I believe they're on a made-to-order basis as well. You have to go through a concierge on their website. But again, you see the crown here at the 12 o'clock. You see that tourbillon movement, which is pretty cool to see, guys. You can see through that sapphire. It does use a silicone strap. The strap is pretty comfortable. And here you can see that case back. Pretty cool movement overall, guys. Like I said, for dollar for dollar, especially you see the Venti stamp logo there. But dollar for dollar, what you get, especially if you can get it at retail, this is a really good buy in your patient. I feel like for a Tourbillon, like I mentioned, if this were some other brand, this would be probably fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 even more in some cases, guys. So if you're interested in one of these, let me know down below. Make, make a comment in the comment box below, guys, because uh, we'd, I'd like to know, see, see how many people are definitely interested in something like this. 
see if maybe they produce a little bit more. And again, this is a pretty cool, kind of unique. You see the venti on the strap here as well. I will take off my Seiko and show you what it looks like just for size comparison, guys. Just for size comparison, side by side, what it looks like next to my Seiko here. It wears, again, you can you can tell it wears a little bit better than what the size specs would stay. I'll show you what it looks like on my 7.5 inch wrist. Again, it actually sits really comfortable because when I first saw it, I thought it might wear a little bit big. But again, overall, the dimensions make it wear fairly comfortable. You see what it looks like, and it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, guys. This definitely probably is not for the smaller wrist of people, for sure. But again, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is this something you're looking at getting? Do you have one? Are you thinking about getting one? And I will see you in the next video. Peace.